This is the Levels Network. I'm Justin Hordor, joined by the Triple OG, Widemu Mason. OG, it is round two preview time. Mate, before we get in the show, uh, nice and quickly, I just want to let everyone know what we're going to talk about. Uh, it's finally come to an end, mate. The Spencer Lenu yeah. eight game ban. We're going to talk on that. We're going to do it pretty quickly. I just want to give my thoughts. I want you to give your thoughts, and then we'll put a bow on it and be done with it, and we can leave it between hopefully Ezra and Spencer. Um, there was an article about Benji's coaching methods uh, that I want to get to. I think there's some good and bad in it, and yeah. we'll dissect that. Uh, and in one of the YouTube questions, which we build our show off. Uh, 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 one of the L1s, Jimmy Reid, has asked us about the Corey Oates situation. So before we get into the games, um, that's what we're going to address, mate. But you ready to go? Yeah, good. I'm good. Uh, we want to thank everyone who is new to the group or all the gang that are joining the L1s from day one. So uh, YouTube is flying at the moment. We're nearly at 22K, mate. We're on Instagram. We're on TikTok. And uh, if you are listening to us on Apple, Spotify, or any of the forms of podcasts, make sure you subscribe or leave us a review. And remember, mm -hmm. writing us a comment on YouTube is that's how we build out the start of our show. And sometimes, uh, in the case of the Corey Oates article, it's probably something that I probably wouldn't have addressed. Uh, I, I would have just let it through to the keeper because this stuff happens all the time in footy. This, but is, this is the loyalty card that when you're in favour, you know, and you leave the club, oh, where's the loyalty? But look what Corey Oates has put into the Broncos and you treat him like this. Mm, where's the loyalty there? Interesting. Hey? We're going to get to it. Speaking of loyalty, yeah. BSC, baby, they're very loyal to us. The BSC Energy Drinks, have you tried them yet? The ultimate solution for boosting focus and mental performance, a clean energy boost to power through your workouts. Just like this morning, Mace, before mm -hmm. we come in here, I did my little Clay Valley run swim. I pump one of those bad boys before I get going. Yeah, I get a little bit jittery in the water, but we get through it. <laughs> you feel good before I it? I feel good. Yeah, I feel no, pumped. I one this morning straight away. I've, I've been working on my strokes too. I think I've got my strokes finally. Um, you know, we, talk, we yeah. talked about it before where you did a lot of – when you got to the roosters, you did a lot of swimming yeah. and getting used to open water swimming and Awful. the strokes, just calming down a little mm. bit. Um, I'll tell you what, if I didn't have the BSC energy drink, I wouldn't have been as focused in there, that's for sure. Um, this is a part of the show – uh, where we get into our YouTube questions. This is brought to you by Culture Kings because this is a part of our culture, mate. So like I said, if you want to level up your fashion game, we have a 10% discount code from our partners uh, and sponsors, Culture Kings. So um, use the code. L-E-V-E-L-S-1. No All S. capitals. No, no S. S. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was, I was reading it off your thing. I was like... <laughs> L E V E L one. All right, let's get it going again. Let's get it going again. Use code L E V E L one. All, all capital, capitals. All capitals. And remember to leave us a comment on YouTube for your your chance to feature in the yeah. next episode. So let's get to this one. This one's from Sally May, and this is uh, she must be a Storm fan. After the Storm game, the Storm players were walking around the field. And Will Warbrick, Will Warbrick came up to us and we had a chat. I said to him, I literally can't believe you won that. I thought you had no chance. Will's response to me was, we believed, we believed, we believed we would, we would win. Mm. That's going to stay with me for a while. Um, I just wanted to put that one in. I thought that was super interesting. Yeah. When you talk about um, the, mold, the yeah. mindset and the culture and why Bally has been so successful – Will Wilbrick is in his second year of a full-time first grader and his mindset going into playing the back-to-back -back -back champs is they were going to win yeah. that game. It's unbelievable what they've set down there. And that's all Craig Bellamy. It's all a mindset. It's all about how they approach games, the amount of preparation that they put into games. I don't think there'd be any other mindset that you'd come out of a video session with Wayne Bennett after like a review, preview, you preview in Melbourne. I mean, you preview in Penrith, you're like, we can win. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I've, I've come out of video sessions with some great coaches like, we'll win yeah. easily because you look at the little cues, you look at what they've put on camera, you look at your team first of all, and you're like, yeah, we can win. It's a level of confidence that this coach installs into players and into the group and into Melbourne Storm as soon as you put that jersey on. You should win. This is interesting because we're going to get to the Benji Marshall, Marshall uh, article a little bit later. He's, doing, he's got a slightly different tactic, but I want to ask you, have you ever been – you played a number of teams. You played under some really good coaches. Have you sat there in a preparation and gone, "We're not going to win"? Well, maybe we're not going to win, but you're not sold on the game plan. Oh, not really, because I'm in a position where I can control 
a lot of my what how I play right in the yeah. middle. You know, like you know, it'd be different if I was like playing center, if I was playing somewhere where I had to rely on other people. Mm. But if you're getting the ball, you're getting the lion's share of the ball. Most of the times, you weren't really worried. You know, there's been there's been a few times where I've gone into teams or meetings and just like young kid playing at seven, yeah. not that confident. Yeah, you know, young okay. kid who's getting a debut. We're going through injuries and stuff like that. Like in 2005 when we had a few injuries, like we had a heap of us out. I'm like, oh. There's a lot of change. Regardless of the game plan, we don't have the team. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like in 2005 when we had myself and Ogre, Sonny Bill, Rennie, Willie Tonga, Marco Mealy, Bobcat, all these guys were like, we were out for like 18 to 20 weeks. Yeah. All at different times. I'm like, kids were getting their debuts way before they should have. Yeah. And like, I'm like, yeah, we're going to get pumped. Simple in my head. I'm like, of course, I can. I'm going to go out there, and my effort's going to be maximum. Yeah. And everyone else is forwards, but like, when you got that many players out, and you got kids that you got kids in your team, you're just like, when you're playing against, a, you know, a top four side, you're going to get pumped. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting, and that, and I think a lot of teams and players would have had that for for whatever reason, like. In it's only happened a couple of times when yeah, a lot of injuries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever I played, I don't know if it was like wishful thinking or what it was. Maybe the optim optimist in me, but. Even at like Paramore, you know, the wooden spoon year, I was like, I'd go into every game going, all right, this is the one we're going to get him now. Like, with a, I, don't, I don't know I why. A, I, I, I like don't that. think it's a – Maybe because I was never no, to the level like, It's a you. mindset where yeah. you just don't think you're going to lose, yeah. right? You get you get to that mindset, you know, look, we just won the comp in 2004. You think mm. we're going to fucking lose? We never thought we are going to lose in that when you put that jersey. That's the level of like respect that we had for the club and the jersey and the history of the club. You know, when I went back to the para thing last week, it's the history of the club, man. You put yeah. that jersey on, you get your jersey given to you, you're supposed to win because yeah. it comes with a level of responsibility for everything. Back <clears throat> to 1935, if you know the history of the club. Mm. You know, like, so it's, 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 it's about the history of the club, you know. So when you get the jersey, you're like, okay, well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of pressure here. Yeah. You're supposed to win, regardless of a young kid who's played two games. No, that's, that's what most clubs are like. That are built on that, built on history. So a lot of clubs they really drive that in in um in their culture now. It's the history of the club. It's not just what's happened in the last five years. And there's no club that does better than Melbourne Storm, obviously, no. with yes. what Will, Walbrick said with. going into that game. That's unbelievable. I thought, yeah, that's something that really stood out to me. Uh, great question from Sally May. Thanks for the question. Uh, the next one. This is on Brad Arthur, mate, and um, I'll, I'll sort of address this one to begin with. Yep. Uh, this is from Rod Mendoza. Just a question. Is Brad Arthur the second role wh whisperer? So in the last three to four years, you look at his history, uh, he's got a few names. I'll add a couple more as well. Uh, Murata Niakota goes from basically mm. an unknown to uh, a really good player for Parramatta, then signs a good contract to the Warriors, and I thought he was really good last year as well. Isaiah Papali wasn't getting a crack at the Warriors, goes on. Uh, well, he's got a crack at Papa Lee, but, of the year. but he wasn't reaching his potential. No. And then he goes on and uh, gets back row of the year at Parramatta. Bryce Cartwright, it's only one week. But in saying that, I got a lot of pushback from my video saying that he, uh, I could see him as a smoky for origin. For those – You're not the only one too. Who, There's been a few, who, few people out there. Okay. Yeah, All right. That's up. been thrown out a little yeah. bit. Okay. Um, yeah, but I also threw that out there because – I don't just judge that of beating you guys on the weekend because he had a really good game. Bryce Cartwright was really impressive last year. I didn't say shit last year about yeah. it because I needed to see it multiple times. Yeah. Now, he started really well this year and I hope he continues and I can tell – you can see watching a player, Mace. You'll know this. Yeah, yeah. This is why sometimes um, ex-players can – you know, we can pick up on other things that other players can't see. There's a mindset. There's a certain or like, journos. <laughs> yeah, or, or, or Buzz Rothfield or Paul Kent. Or, or Jeez. Cop and Strays, 360 Cop and Strays yeah. already. Love you, 360. But sometimes there are things that you can see where you just go, all right, he's – look, He even though the performance was great, but I love the focus that he was showing. Yeah. Um, we haven't seen much of him because Brycey Cartwright and Sean Lane. Sean Lane's another one. Sean Lane I thought you were sleeping on Sean Lane. Yeah, Sean Lane. Sean Lane wasn't Manly. named here, yeah, but no, Sean, no. he was a journeyman. He's, he was my, probably my number one yep. guy that they've turned into a little diamond there, found a little diamond. Yep. Papa Lee, yeah, he had talent, Papa Lee. Sean Lane had a little bit of talent, but he was thrown around like Bulldogs, Manly, I think, like. Yes. So who Bulldogs, was, he, was it Bulldogs? Was, and I then believe Manly. he was Tigers in lower grades. I could be wrong. And then he went to Manly when I left. Yep. He went to the Warriors too for a year. Yeah, so he, he went was, over to the Warriors. Did he? Yeah, he did. He yeah, comes back and he's a proper back row in the comp now. Yeah, you're right. It's in the heels knocker that he 
Oh, did he? Oh, yeah. I need to watch that doco too. I'll watch that doco and have that ready for review. Yeah. yeah apparently, it was a really. I, I was listening to Jimmy Smith. He was. Um. He had a really good interview you know, with Jimmy Smith. On I'm SCA. not worried about Cartwright. He's always had that talent. Papa Lee, That's he's unearthed him as well because he showed a little, he showed a bit of talent. He could run hard, all that kind of yep. stuff. Thought he was going to be a middle. Brings him over, plays him on the left edge, a uh, right edge. Sean Lane, left edge. Mm. They've created a massive monster there a couple of years ago. I got to the grand final. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like but those two guys, Bryce Cartwright is always going to be that. Now you've got to give him credit for Bryce as well because a lot of people two years ago, like, like I'll, I'll be honest, I'm a, mate, I'm, I'm, a mate, I'm a mate of Bryce's and I know him well. A couple of years ago, I thought he was done. But I'm saying like, you're not, he's not, he didn't unearth Bryce Cartwright. He's okay. doing it himself. Like the talent has always been there. Yes. Like okay. Sean Lane, you would say five years ago, okay. there's not that much talent yeah, there. Yeah, get your point. Yep. You know, Sh- Papaliti, there's, uh, is it ba- Dalian back row the year talent? Yeah. Oh, he's okay. Yeah. Is it 750 a year at Tigers talent changing the whole trying to change the whole culture talent? No. Mm-hmm. Bryce Cartwright always had that. He's just cultivated it now. Now he's matured as a man, he's a father, he's got his shit settled. Because a couple of years ago he was on the fucking outer. Mm. You know, but no one ever doubted his talent. As I said the last time, we've been waiting for him to arrive. He should have had that blues jersey three years ago. Yeah, yeah, he was projected to have it yeah. three years ago. Um, not everything's guaranteed. I know, you know that, what but he's like. worked you his gotta, ass off. Yeah. Yeah, good on him. Because there's, there's a kid there who's got immense talent his whole career. Then it's sort of evened out, and then he's now he's had to work for it. It's, it's good that he's doing it Yeah, now. it's the one percenters and yep. the defense in particular mm. that stand out for me in that one game so far. I want to see him. Yeah, but you're right about last year. He was yeah. fucking – he was going at it yeah, last Yeah, he was trending year. up last yeah, year. Yeah, he was going at it last year. He was trending up last year. We didn't say shit, year. but I was just happy for him to fucking do it. Yeah. Um, and I will just say just quickly on Brad Arthur before we move on, I had him as an assistant coach at both Parramatta and my best year ever as a back rower was Manly 2013. Obviously, we go to the grand final. And the one thing about Brad Arthur, he keeps it very simple. He keeps you very accountable and he builds on the little things in your game. He's really big on that. So we'll watch video rather than watching video. Like I had a really good year that year, um, scored a couple of tries, was fucking – went from you know wooden spooner to, to going to a grand final. And the one thing that Brad kept on drumming into me, would watch video – and he would have about three to four clips, so in attack, three to four in attack and, and defense, and he'd always bring up shit that I did wrong. Mm-hmm. It was never gas, like always keeping me level, and he would show – he would show me uh, video clips of me not getting in, getting legs yeah. when I was there to be had, yeah. not getting back or shifting down a short side when I should have Been had open. more numbers on the open. Mm. And he, the, the, the best thing about Brad is he, he doesn't point the finger, he lets you identify it. Yeah. What should you have done here? No, he just Pause. sits there. He he just so we'll be watching video, we'll play the clip, and I go, Fuck, I should have gone to the open then. He goes, Sweet. Yeah. Right, move on. We go yeah. to the next clip. And it was just all I needed. He he needed to know that he understood I was doing it, but he also made me That's good. get on the front foot. It. So it's, it's so do really, you think he's a good coach? I do. And do I think you, the hardest the hardest places defensively oh, this left and right four. Is, is the back rowers and they if that if they take shortcuts and they don't do the little things right the middles do it trickles out all the way mm. it fucks up the middles and it makes the wingers and the edges make really do you bad count decisions. the locks as back rowers now or are they separate uh, you just call them middles no yeah i, I think saying, i think good, locks good's are, good's pretty good yeah i think locks are more an extension in the middle it's now. middle it is a middle yeah yeah and yeah, an extra he's the edge back row. Yeah. He's got he he knows what he's doing there. He does. Plus yeah. he's got some talent there as well. Yeah, for sure. But it's the same principles with, with mm. Jermaine Hopgood as well. All right, this one's from Jimmy Reed. I mentioned this one before. Shout out to Jimmy, he's the L one from day one. Opinion from the lads regarding the Corey Oates situation. So here's a little bit from the Corey and Mail. Mace, Oates has been allocated to the Burley Bears for the 2024 season and it's reportedly angered he's been forced to travel 110 kilometres from his house <laughs> in Brisbane to the Courier Mail. Queenslanders. Mayor. According to the Courier Mail, <laughs> the Broncos have two more affiliated clubs within Brisbane in Winner Manly and South Logan, with both being a shorter distance to travel. Oates was a late scratching from the Bears' Caesar opening clash against North Devils and reportedly won't take the field against Townsville. Like the, I think the rumour is that he just was fucking couldn't be asked. Now, that is just a rumour. Uh, it's been circulating a little bit. But these are the little things that clubs do, coaches potentially do when they might want to push you out. They might want to – Make things a little uncomfortable? They make it uncomfortable. And if you're the – It reeks of that. If you're the average Joe Blow who works nine to five and, and you know, might be a plumber, might be a tradie, and you hear this – you Shut you up. Go, you'll go, fucking <laughs> get to training and go to fucking travel down – Getting paid 800000 Travel yeah. down the highway – but it's it's just a pain in the ass and there's got to be – what you got to understand is they're doing this for a reason and I think the report now has 
uh, 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 snowboard into Corey Oates is filthy. He's not playing. Corey Oates would be filthy. He's not playing, but. It's this. It's this part of it. I reckon is the main part. Is that they're sending him down to Burnley when they could quite easily send him to win. So there's Manly. no. So they could do this. They could go to win a They could. He, they could. They could. They just. They put him. They put him in Burnley, and they're trying so to. There's no rules. There's no quotas up there. No. Nah. Can't have a first grader. So it's nothing to do with that. No. They. They. So they just gone. They go. got the option to send <laughs> yeah, him to yeah, three yeah, teams. Yeah, I'm saying, sometimes, to... like, there's a few little like nuances there with like mm. he's played too many games. He might have too many okay, points. Gotcha. All that sort of oh, shit. Okay. So gotcha. we need to find all that out. Oh, I'm not a hundred percent. All that shit, right? Okay. Before we come and accuse Broncos of like trying to squeeze the legend <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah. But I'm thinking. That's a good that, point, mate. You know, like I'm thinking like Winner Manly might have. A stacked team of Broncos. It could be because he's a rep play, yeah, ex player. Points. He's played over two hundred games. It could be the point system there. I know that okay. they have that in Q Cup. Yep. They have it in New South Wales at Rugby League they as do. well. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure it could be something to do with that, or it could be just the latter. All right. They're trying to piss him off. They're trying to make him walk, which I don't think he will. I think Corey Oates will play first grade this year because there's always injuries on the wing. For sure. So um, I agree he's with a that. club legend there. He's been around for a minute, mate. Mm. He's been around for, since 2008. About 210 first grade games, I think, oh, Oates. I think he played in the back row at yeah, one point. I think maybe even more. I think he played his 250. I'll see. I'll get it up as well. I think it's going. a fair bit. Um, yeah, so it, it sucks. You know, he probably doesn't want to end it this way. And how old is he? Would he be 33, 34? He is. 29. Shut up. Corey Oates is 29. Corey Oates is 29. <laughs> <laughs> he's been around for a minute. Debuted in 2013. Hey, 13. And he's played 202 games. Yeah. Well, wow, I thought he was in that 2008 system with McCulloch and that. He's got some juice. No, he's not part of Normie's gang. Okay. Well, fuck. He should be low. He should be filthy. He's nearly still in his prime. He's still got <laughs> fuck. 39. He was 34. <laughs> how many sorry. How sorry, many? Oatsy. So he played, 10, hour, 10 origins, couple of tests. Nine origins. Uh, no tests. No I would have thought, thought he yeah. played tests as well, but nine origins. Um, I can understand him being frustrated uh, with playing. I really can understand him. If, the, if it's not a quota thing, I can understand him being frustrated, sent down, especially because I know that about half a dozen of the players live in Gold Coast. So it would make yeah. sense for a lot more of the players if you're not playing – to be like, I know, I, th I think Jesse Arthurs, Paddy Carrigan, I think Jordan Ricky, they all live down in Goldie. I could be wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, I sent a podcast with um, right opposite the Burley Pav with Keegan Hip Dave <laughs> with, with Geordie talking about it. But um, at the end of the day, 29, still got plenty yeah, of footy day, left. Just in suck him. it up and get back in the team. Yeah, I back thought he was fucking Ben Hunt's age. <laughs> yes, yeah, so seriously. I thought I, he was I from that, he was that, 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 that vintage. Yeah, I, I thought, thought he was that. And I was like thinking 250 games, he's sort of at the end. Yep. Oh, keep fighting. No, it's geez. Yeah, Jesse Arthur's taking your spot. He was twenty eight last year. Yeah, I like I, I, Jesse Arthur's nice man. And then you got Mariner. I think I, Mariner's down. I think he's, down the, I think he's down the board, mate. Mm. Well, he definitely is because they're they're on the wings this yeah, week. Yeah, I'm just so. saying. Well, what, what, what happens if you just say one of those gets injured? Do you put do you put uh, Mariner in? You put Oates in because no, Mariner's already in. Oh, he's already got yeah. yeah. Jump Mariner's point. on the wing and uh, Arthur's is on the wing, so he's next in line. But does this behaviour potentially block him from? Um, a Tristan Saylor coming in, for instance, you know, like who knows? Tritty, I know 100%. Tristan was really good at fullback, well, but he's probably on a fair bit of this, right? Up at the Bronx. Well, he just got re upped at the yeah. end of last year, too, for I believe it would have been around the 300, 350 mark, which is good money for a winger, but he's also played for Origin. It's a good just backup to have. Reese Walsh. Yeah. He's not there for a backup, he's a starter in the game. Mm. He's great play twos and stuff like that. He's good under the high ball. He's still a commodity to an NRL team. You know what? He probably <coughs> would have suited Vegas Looks good more than the white, other I reckon. You want <laughs> you never leave, they, they never leave Queensland. You're mate. always trying to recruit for the blue and white, <laughs> aren't um, All right, mate. Let's get into Spencer Lenu. Uh, I've got a, a bit bit of the aftermath. So yep. he, he has been uh, handed an eight-game ban, which um, just happens to coincide that it's the game after the Roosters. Spion. Um, but he would have he would have loved to play in that. Sorry. Yeah, I think there's pros and cons definitely to him playing in that game that we'll get to. Um, I'll just read through all this bit, mate. I'll have my little say. Yeah, and go, I'll go, give go. you your, your say to finish. I haven't got much to say on it. Sydney Roosters' problem. Spencer Lenu was uh, on Monday night was handed suspended for eight matches for calling Broncos five eight. Ezra Mam, a monkey last week's opening round and game in Las Vegas. Mam did not attend the hearing and sent a 12-paragraph statement, but the final eight paragraphs were retracted from public view, which was quite interesting. I'm, Mm. I'm sort. Of, I'm not a fan of that. Like, if 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 you go in and um, this is the only part I'm critical on Ezra about this whole thing is if you are indeed going to call someone out for just saying something in the game. Totally I think it's up. It's only fair for all of us to know what was being said 
in the entire conversation. So still don't know what that is. Joe Kelly had a presser after and a few things just didn't sit right with me. So this is what he said. Spencer didn't use the word in the subject of tonight's hearing in a racially derogatory way. To be clear, the club does not believe Spencer was putting Ezra in a racially based way. I'd also like to acknowledge Spencer for his character that he has shown over the past week. From the very beginning, he was totally honest and put his hand up and wanted his to own this immediately. Bronco star Ezra Mam has reportedly rejected Spencer Lunia's offer to face an apology for calling him monkey during the Las Vegas clash. That was on the 8th of March, Mace. Mm. So a couple of things with this. The Roosters have normally been great at this and this isn't a like point fingers and keep blaming people because I think there's been too much of that in the last uh, two weeks. I will just say here are a couple of things that I think could have been handed handled a lot better. From the Roosters point of view, straight off the bat, um, they should never should have let him interview straight after the game. Once they, I think we all were watching the game and we heard the accusation, whoever was involved in the, in the PR or whatever it may media be. Media manager. Or, or media, media manager, manager. But even coming from Robbo from the top, assistant coaches, do not media let media Roosters manager, speak. Um, so that I've read that out from Joe Kelly. It was also stuttering because there's a part of me that there's a lot of, half truth sort of in it. So I my opinion on this has been the same all the way. Spencer understood it was like it's a racial remark. Don't don't get it twisted with that, but because of his upbringing and the way that that word was probably thrown around during his upbringing, he didn't realize how serious it was going to take or the effect it was going to take on Ezra. So you don't throw that word out if you don't mean it in that way. That's my opinion on it. Um, and also, he if the information was that he was honest from the start, and this is going back to the roosters now, I, we don't know we don't know this, but we got an apology or we, the apology was reported five days after. If Spencer did indeed own up to it straight away and was honest from the start, then it's obviously the roosters have dropped the ball or Spencer didn't do it. So one of them isn't. Mm. Isn't correct, and again, like this, I'm p- being pretty harsh on the Roosters here because they've got high standards that they normally handle these things the right way. And the last little bit before I move on, uh, the, the, there's one other party, and it's the NRL. I understand the process of what how this normally plays out, and that is um, you, they had to wait for the full round to complete to have anything judged trial upon. by media. Fucking. That it should have been done before round one, mm-hmm. and there should have been they sh- the NRL should have paid uh, the parties to come in and adjudicate on this straight away. The fact that it dragged all the way through was oh, not beneficiary for uh, anyone. Beneficial for Ezra it wasn't beneficial for uh, uh, Spencer. The game, the everything. Roosters, the game. It was ugly all the way through. We had players chipping in. We yes. had past players chipping in, and I really feel like if the rule had been. Whatever the whatever the suspension may had would have been, if it was the eight games, we could have addressed it. It would have been a bit of shit talk for probably a day or two, 24 hours. But then the footy, we could have got on with it with the footy. The fact that we have totally to agree. we watched a really good round one uh, performance from everyone, and then we still you know talked about it on Monday, and now we're addressing it because this is our first time to talk about it. Uh, it's gone on for a, seven days too long for me. We addressed it at uh, after after Vegas, didn't we? Yeah. We had no, a little we bit had, to say. This is this is the adjudication. Yeah, the, and there's been uh, an ex teammate, two ex teammates of yours are on different levels of it. So JT doesn't think that the suspension was enough. Um, he he thinks they missed an opportunity to really uh, stamp it out in the game. Whereas Braith on 360 was sort of thought eight was okay. He could have understood. Uh, this is uh, don't want to put words in his mouth, but yeah. I was watching the show. I think he said roughly around four to six. Yeah. Um, so there's – You just see from different levels, right? Because JT is yes. an Indigenous, proud Indigenous brother, right? So he's sick of this shit. All Indigenous people are sick of it, regardless if it's coming from Polynesians or – and especially from, from um, Anglo-Saxons, white, white Australians or anything like that. So it's uh, – I agree with you. It took too long. They shouldn't have done that. The Roosters really dropped the ball, the media manager, media manager mm. at, in Vegas when it happened. Get yep. him fucking away. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like you knew what happened on the field, right? You just got accused of calling someone a monkey. As mm. soon as the game's over, you put him straight up the fucking back. You're not talking until we get this story straight. Did you say it or not? Yes. Whatever the fuck it is, you got no comment anyway. You're not even getting in front of the camera. You don't have to do that shit. Yeah. I've never heard fucking Spencer Lane do an interview in his life. Yeah. Then he does that yeah, in Vegas. Crazy. Yeah. I'm like, 
fuck, mate, why are you throwing him out like that? Of course he's going to answer it like that. It's just part of the game because mm. it is part of the game out there. Mm. You see the difference between Ola Kuatu and a JT. 20 years apart, mate. You know, JT's been up in Queensland. He's copped that shit his whole life. Mm. Ola Kuatu and all the brothers out in Mount Druitt and that, that's just the norm. Yeah, it affects different races. Different and, races, and, different, mate, because yeah, Polynesians and stuff like that, we just throw those words fucking – we throw it around very lightly. Mm. You know what I mean? But I'd never say anything like that to an Indigenous brother. Yeah. It'd just be like me but like just saying something to another brown brother. But mm. It wouldn't mean shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because there's no real derogatory name, no real hurtful meaning behind it. But I'd never say that to an Indigenous boy. Mm. One of my boys, I'd never say it to JTGI, anything like that, because I know that name is the fucking worst thing you can say. Yeah. And do you think the beauty, not the beauty of this, there's you know, you got to always got to be some sort of silver lining. There's got to be some education. Yeah, do you think it's a you – know, Spencer's the, the guy that's copping a big bound on this, but at least now hopefully there are young kids in Western Sydney, 12, 11 years old, yeah. that are now aware that this is – just Something. fucking, this is not it. You yeah. know what I mean? We told, we said it last time. They're gonna, they're gonna throw the book at him. They're gonna try and make a rule to say, so to the twelve year old kid out, out west or up north or anything like that. You don't say that against your brown brother. Yep. Polynesians, indigenous, anything like that. It's still racism. So that's the bottom line. Is eight weeks enough? That's just enough. Yep. That's just enough. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm thinking I'm, that's I'm a, that's that. enough. He's copped that much shit. The way the NRLs handle it is fucking ordinary because they just dragged it on. Should have been before round one, so we ended this thing. We're not talking about in round two and using all this shit energy up. It's made. It's very divisive between older players and younger players. It's a different generation. Divisive different between ger- society. Yeah, it's and society. But it's between generations. You hear Trell and and, and Choc going at it on. You know, you're talking about two different generations, right? They're mm. all proud Indigenous brothers, right? Fine for the same cause all the time. Mm. They turned those guys against each other. Mate, I, I, tra- you know what I mean, like, I trained on Tuesday just with a couple of my mates, my best mates, and we all had three to four different opinions on yeah. it. Yeah, like and, and and like these are my best mates who, you know, like it. it like I said, it is super divisive. So I'm um, like, I, I speak to guys that are around like my age and uh, Polynesian. They're like, they just they, they they probably nearly agree with Chuck. Like, what's the big deal? Mm. You know what I mean? I'm like, well, then I'd flip it and say, look, where Ezra Man's from. You know, he's he's up in Queensland, man, yeah. and he's surrounded by white people all the time. Like, yeah. he went to school with like, a heap of that. So if you say that to the young kid, like, that's probably the worst thing you can say to him. Mm. So I understand different – there's different levels, right? Out, out west, you're just – everybody's brown. Mm. Asian, it's no, we don't look at colour like that. Yeah. Up there, they do. Yeah. I'm not saying Queensland's racist or anything like that, but there's more – you know, like, there's indigenous, then there's white people more. There's hardly any Polynesians around there. The uh, in, uh, the intent in which it's said up north or in certain – not even up north, in certain it's uh, a different, demographics yes. or, or uh, regions – would definitely be different yes. than it's probably said. And that's what it is out there, right? So it's just – it's a it's, a, it's an ugly little thing that happened, but if I can happen, NRL took care of it. Let's just move on round two. Last thing, just before we move on, and I hope uh, – I'm sure you'll agree with this. Uh, I think Ezra has still declined the opportunity yeah. to speak to – I'd love, to, I'd love for, to Cam for Ezra Smith, to Cam Smith said something that. great. He goes, look, don't worry about talking to Ezra, man. He's obviously declined it. Go talk to JT. Go talk to GI. Go oh, talk yeah, to Sam Friday. Right. Let's talk to those. T- talk to the to the guys that have come through. Right. Yeah, good have chat. a good chat to those guys and see where they stand on it because yeah. they're all Queenslanders and they're all from up there to understand for, for and to tell Spencer what that mean that what that word actually means. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I think that would be the smartest thing for him why to do. That, why that word affects them differently. Yes. To what it, would to what it does to what it does out yep. west. So go talk to those brothers there. All right, let's move on. Uh, that's enough of that, and uh, hopefully we can all improve uh, moving forward on it. Now let's get to a Benji's coaching methods. Benji Marshall hasn't even been the head coach for a single NRL game yet. There have been oh, doubts nice. raised whether he's put in, in the work required to be a successful coach. The Daily Telegraph's Dean Ritchie penned a column this week. Shout out to the Bulldogs. I don't know Dean Ritchie could coach either. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Let me finish. Let me Imagine finish. Dean Ritchie was your head coach. <laughs> Fuck off. Let me finish. <laughs> this week about Marshall's unusual approach to coaching and whether it will work. In the fair dinkum stakes, I didn't set to bag Benji. Yes, you did. Oh but I wanted to throw out there a question. Is this a rock star who may revolutionize coaching or is he a coach who won't put in the hours to succeed? <laughs> Benji has come out on the record and said he is in the 24-7 coach. He doesn't want it to be all-consuming. He's got a family and wants to look after them. I applaud him for that. I spoke to Benji today and he disputed a lot of the interpretations. Interpretations too. 
And the thing that hurt him the most was the insinuation that he wasn't putting the hours in. So very um, the way Dean Ritchie would have put it as well. So the stereotype out there is that all coaches get in at 5 a.m. and do 18 hours a day. And if Benji doesn't do that, who's to say it isn't right? But who's to say it might not work though? Benji elects not to put his players through watching the video. He'll just say, let's get on the field. That's very different from other clubs. I'm not sure how many coaches Dean Ritchie's watched – <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the Wayne Bennett's and all that kind of stuff. There's not that many time. There's not many um, sessions in the video. Mm. You know, like depends what coaching tree you're cut from. Yeah, specifically, let's start on the video because I just gave you an example where Brad was really good for it. But mm. Brad, I also said Brad gave me three to four clips. It wasn't as much yeah. uh, as as probably uh, – is, is reported here that all these coaches do. Uh, mate, it's a bit of a myth what he's talking about. They yeah. don't come in at five o'clock and leave at like eight. Yeah. You come in just before video and you do like it's it's like I've seen what the coaches do. I've seen – I know what the schedule is. They'd be working from at home. Of course right, they would, too. but yeah. not stop it. I yeah. mean like they're cut, they cut video, they're individual video, then you've got the team video, you've got edge video, middle video, all that kind of stuff. You know, and like you've also got all the offensive. For that. Hey, you've got halves coaches, fucking offensive, defensive. You've got about six, four or five coaches there. Mm. You know, you just run whatever things you want. Like, Ciro's different, right? He's a young coach. He's a fucking go-getter. He loves it. Yep. You know, he's cut from the fucking tree out there. Yep. You know, the Penrith tree. They work hard. They, that's, that, that's that methodology, right? What about the Wayne Bennett tree? Mm. Craig Bellamy. You know, like Robbo. They're very detailed with their coaching. You well, know, it's I'm more a- personal. It's more the relationship building, getting the best out of you. How's your life, Hoz? How's it going? Mm. How's your wife? How's your kids? Mm. Is everything good? As long as your life's good, happy wife, happy life, all this shit, balance outside football, that's coaching as well. Yes. Right? A lot of coaches don't do that because they're not personable. You can't have a fucking conversation with them. All they want to do is get the best out of you. That's where Some Benji coaches would have don't. a big advantage though. Benji's you know? a fucking good dude. You probably want to play for him. So he's got to, he's got to learn himself mm. how, what, what works for him. He hasn't fucking coached one game yet. Yeah. Dean Richie, shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Like just <laughs> you never coached before. You're sitting on the outside trying to judge this one person. Yeah. About, about his coaching methodologies, right? He doesn't – he just – he's still learning. Yeah. Right? He's still there every single day. He runs the ship. He's nope. been coached by the best. Wayne Bennett, all these other coaches. He's had little little sprinkles of them all. Yeah. Tim Sheens, he's had all these great coaches. So, so he's got to make himself the coach, right? There's still so much more growth and in yeah, his coaching. And not just copy and paste like most other coaches do. Mm. How does that work? I'm going to do what Craig Bellamy does. Well, do you have a Melbourne system? Do you have Melbourne? Yeah. I'm going to do what uh, Nathan, uh, Cleary does, Ivan Cleary. Do you have those dogs out there? Yeah. Do you have fucking Leota and Fisher Harris? Yeah. Do you have like, Isaiah Yo, Nathan Cleary, Luai, Kurita, all these sort of guys in the last five years? You don't. Play to your cattle. He knows what team he's got. He's trying to get his own identity as a coach and get their own identity as a team out there. Let him fucking coach. Sit there and write shit articles so we can fucking waste time talking about this shit. (laughs) I'll give you two clear examples. So my time at Parra, again, we go back to always – I played at two clubs, Parramatta, and I went from basically the opposite ends of the spectrum. I went from Parramatta – in 2012, Wooden Spoon, we trained the house down. We trained so hard. We did so much video. We had to, right? There was a there was a not only internal pressure but external pressure that we were losing games and we weren't doing it well enough. So we were watching more video. We we're doing more training sessions. It was so tiresome, and it yeah, actually for you, it, it actually wore us down. I remember at times I was like, it wasn't enjoyable. Now, I guess if you're a Parramatta fan, you're like. A lot of para, para fans would have gives a fuck like win games. That's that's how <laughs> that's you fix it, right? It There's the counter argument to that. But then I go to Manly, and like no shit. Um, the when I arrive, Manly was fun. Manly was fun. We get there. Um, training starts at nine o'clock compared to seven. I'm I'm out on the field at at eight thirty, and like I'm the only like there's three or four of us new players that are out on the field. Mm. All the OGs just come strolling out, coffee in hand, relaxed. Boots undone. <laughs> we were home by lunchtime, one o'clock. It just like situations are different, personalities are different. Obviously, those players had done it for a long time, mm. and they were rewarded with that. But I just found it super contrasting um, the different styles of coaching. Where again, it was no knock on twos. Two's understood his cattle. He'd probably seen mm. what Desi had done before him. It was about managing these fucking OGs. That it was more about um, l- uh, less is more for them, and making sure they're ready to go because they're preseason. Like 
I was looking around going, fuck, like we, yeah. we, our trials were always shit and I'm like, fuck, yeah. we might get dusted and I, I could be the reason, yeah. right? Because training was nowhere near to the standard of Parramatta and how hard we train there. Sometimes it's just too much, man. Yeah. Video is too much for some kids. People learn differently. We're all sitting in there like fucking most of us got ADHD sitting there. You concentrate for like two minutes and then you start fucking doing jokes and – Taking the piss out of things, you know what I mean? Like that's what happens in video sessions. You're a grown ass man, like you're in a fucking classroom. See this all in the classroom. I bet you go twenty years ago when we were in school, we weren't the most focused fucking kids, were we? You wouldn't have been telling nah, any jokes and nah, just you? nonstop, nonstop. <laughs> that, that was fun for me, right? Mm. Being in video, right? Doing a little bit of video, get out there and let's just go fucking play footy, right? Because mm. I knew half the team when we're doing, going through, going through whatever moves we're working on. It's just going over everyone's fucking head. Yeah. And you get out there and like, goes, what was that? What, was, what were we talking about? you get out there and you yeah. control and so we've got to go through it. We walk through the drill. We jog through the drill. Then we fucking sprint it. Yeah. Because I know that everybody didn't really get it. The halves got it all in because they're all like students of the game. Braith, Shifty, all the fullbacks and the nines and that. Middles are just like, where the fuck am I? How many times do you, you like just watch going, stuff? Where, where am I, Shifty? Yeah. Just hang on the inside, mate. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, That's what like, I was going to ask Ogre you. used to do that. Like, where am I? You stay in the middle. Yeah. So like for people that don't know, there might be you know certain plays or whatever and they're rolling through and the coach will say stuff and you'll be sitting in video. You might zone out because you've had a tough session before. It's a long season. And Monday. Then you get out it's there, Monday. You get out there, you run the shave and you go – Shit, Fozzy, what was – like, where am I going to be? Yes, just run this line or, yeah. or just drop underneath me here and then have a middle yeah. on the inside. Because guys like Braith and, and Braith and Shifty and uh, that, they know everything because yeah. they have to know everything, right? Yeah. So I think there's always different, uh, you know, methodologies, ideologies with coaching, all that kind of stuff because Benji's been coached by Wayne. <clears throat> Not too much video. Yeah. A lot of attention, a lot of, a lot of love, a lot of caring, you know what I mean, and a lot of effort, right? You've got to get it on the field. Yeah, so the pro – Sorry, you can't have an hour field session – or hour and a half field session, and then a two and a half hour fucking, I mean, video session and a two and a half hour field session. It drains you. Can it be problematic for Benji though, if because he's seen Wayne do that and Wayne's got this aura and knows how to flick the switch? Like, well, I can imagine Wayne wouldn't have to do as much video or as much at training, but he can go over to you and say oh, something, mate. whisper in your ear before the game, and you go, holy fuck, yes, I'm on. Yes, he does. Well, I yeah. think he's, so can that be a, he's, not, can that he's be obviously a bit not going to go like, I'm going to be like Wayne Bennett, yeah, right? Yeah. Wayne's earned the right to do that, right? So he's just going to take a little bit out of Wayne Bennett, a little bit out of Tim Sheens, the other coaches that he's had in his career. He's just take a little bit out of that and then go, okay, I'm going to make myself Benji Marshall. At the end of the day, he's Benji Marshall, right? You can get a little bit from everybody else, but at the end of the day, know who you are. You're, you're Benji Marshall. You've got your own brain. You're your own person. All right, Be mate. that. I love it. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I think or we're the same just person. listen to Bulldog Richie if you want tips on coaching. <laughs> Fucking easy. <laughs> Uh, the pressure will be on, though, in the first four to five me. weeks now, and these sort of articles don't help him, that's for sure. No. Um, all right, mate, let's get into preview on round two. And as we did last week, we're going to start off with my Levels Best Friend special. Now, Easy work. Put your, put your fingers in your ears, <laughs> mate, because I'm going against the Bulldogs. I saw you yesterday. <laughs> Come on, bro. All right. Kill me like that. Hey, I've got to – I was against them um, last year, but – I'm trying to get a win for the Talk punters. Talk to Ciro too. He's going to come at you, bro. I'm going I'm forward to him. He's off, he's off social. I think this is a bad matchup for your team. This is uh, – when I looked at all the games um, and I look at sort of how Cronulla constructed, I've got I've, I've said this all along. I feel like you really struggle through the middle and it's definitely the Cronulla strength. So I'm on the Sharks, 13-plus, mate, against you boys. And this Lukey, is – And – Get I've, me out. <laughs> and – Apologies to all the Bulldogs fans that are watching because of Mace. I've got oh. Nico Hines to score in the first 60 minutes. Oh, he's going to get for some For $17 from the traders with our partners, the tab, with a max bet of $25. 25 times 7 is a little fucking jam oh, to me. Uh, so let's get into the games, mate. Kicking it off, Brisbane at home against South. This is going to be a cracker. Uh, the tab currently have Brisbane at $1.38, South at $3.10. The line is 8.5. And the lineups as are as followed: Reese Walsh, uh, Jesse Arthurs, and Dean Mariner retain their wing spots. Tony Staggs and Selwyn Cobbo in the centres. Ezra Mam, Adam Reynolds, Corey Jensen comes back into the starting lineup uh, where Marty Tapuu was a late change last week uh, in round zero. Billy Walters, Payne Haas. Pia Kuda, uh, he gets past his HIA assessment. Jordan Ricky, Paddy Carrigan back in the middle where he belongs. 
Tyson Smoothie, Fletcher Baker, Kobe Hetherington, and Marty Tapawu is back in the 17 jersey. Watch out for Xavier Willison in the 19 jersey as well. I feel mm. like he should – if I feel if like he not, should be 17. He should be a late change. Rabbitohs team, Latrell Mitchell, Alex Johnston, Isaiah Tass, Richard Kenner, and Jake with Gago. They're all the same as round zero. Cody Walker, Lockie Ilias. Tavita Tatola, Damian Cook, Sean Kepi, Keon Kolomontangi. Tell us Duncan is the new guy in for Dry Arrow who could be missing, could have a big stint on the sideline with a yeah. shoulder injury. Uh, Cam Murray at lock, Saliva Havili, Davey Mawala, Shaq Mitchell onto the bench and Thomas Burgess in the 17 jersey. Mace, how do you yeah. see this game? It's pretty even um, I've gone all back over the shot. I like, I like, I like Brisbane yep. straight off the bat. I think they're going to be too much for him. Um, that back row is dangerous when I look at that. Pia Kuro, if he's back to his best, Ricky and Carrigan. Carrigan, if he's in the middle, he's one of the best middles in the game. Um, Talis Duncan, Kalama Tungi, you know, I think they're – Talis Duncan will find, find it hard, I think, uh, on that left edge. Just the timing, I think. Yeah. You know, he's been playing off the off the bench a fair bit. And he plays and through the middle. And that's a real – yeah, he plays through the middle. Now he's going to be on an edge, has to be a little bit wider. Obviously, um, direct all the middles like Kepi and Totola, all these guys. But I like the backs, man. Look at that back five. Reese Walsh, Arthurs, Katoni Staggs, Selwyn Cobbo and Dean Mariner. They're the ones that are going to get you out of yardage. Katoni Staggs is about it this year. You know, like just say he's finished the year off like he, uh, he started the year like he finished it off last year. I, th- I thought he was – they had a good battle against Swali, but I thought Swali got, got him on points. Swali is a gun. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's one of the so best. I, he's one of the best defenders in the game. So if he's, he's, but he's. I'm just saying he's willing to fucking go at your chest. He's come. He's coming at you. But Mace, I agree with you because my anytime try scorer. I think <laughs> losing on points, he's the type of dog that'll yeah. piss him off. So I'm going to yeah. go Katoni Stags anytime. Yeah. And I'm going to go Broncos minus eight and a half. But I really struggled with it. I went back and forth. I feel like there's going to be so much emotion in this game. Ezra Mann was obviously. You know his name's been through the papers all throughout the week. Latrell chipped in, so there's got to be there's going to be a lot of emotional energy in this yeah. to begin with. It's who can harness it back in, bring it back in, and get on with the job. And I think with Paddy Carrigan moving back to the middle, he's my guy to just straighten up the Broncos. Yeah, it's going to be a problem. Payne Haas, mm. you're dishing out 80 minutes in the first round. Come on, son. Like <laughs> Kepi and Totola you got a big, big job mm. because he's not stopping. He's not scared of anything. He looks fucking fit. He looks like he's gotten bigger this year and fitter. He's a freak. Bro, come on, man. Um, is he the closest thing to Jason Tomalolo that we've seen? As in yeah, without, the, the yeah, effect? Yeah, yeah, it is. Like, remember yeah. Jay, when T- Tomalolo got fit, right? Mm. It took, took him a couple of years to get on this scene. Yeah. Haas hit the scene straight away. Yeah, that's true. That was the difference, right? When Tom- Tomalolo's peak – I don't think anyone's fucking touched it yet because yeah. of the domination of club level, every le- every single level into the World Cups and stuff like that. Won a grand final and then got yeah. into a grand final. Yeah, without and JT he's just like well. on his back, you know. But Paddy Carrigan at lock is the key there because he will get off the back of a Payne Haas run, right? Mm. Jensen, that first guy, get a quick play of the ball, and then might be a, might be an outside back come in there, quick play of the ball, get a Payne Haas, and then get on Carrigan. That's and, that's the that's sort of most that's the sort of um, combinations that they want. And they're back at Suncorp we'll yeah. with again too. Well, yes, I think exactly. That, I and think it, just, it, it does because they never even thought they were just thinking they were just going to go through the edge. But now, like you know, Payne Haas is uh, he's that dude, man. In saying that, I think it will suit both teams because you know Latrell loves that beautiful yeah. like yep. sweeping left. They'll, shape they'll as well. try and make um, the seven. Lucky Ilias. Ilias try and go right a fair bit. Okay, stack the numbers. Yeah, because that that side that left side just looks dangerous. So when they they when they get it right. It's very, very hard to stop. It's just a couple of cues that they need to get right yeah. to slow that play the ball down when they get to that right side of the post, which would be their left. They try and get that real quick play the ball and that wide ball to Cam Murray and he gets pretty much to the four man and the outside runs the out the, – the, the back row runs that outside in, three man gets in and they all fan out. Yeah. And then next minute, Sean Johnson's fucking throwing the ball in the air. <laughs> it happens that quick. Yeah. So because Brisbane's got such mobile middles – when they come up and they check, they work under the ball really well, like Payne Haas, like Paddy. Yep. They put a lot of pressure. I'll put a lot of pressure on Cam Murray. That's the main guy. He put pressure on Cam Murray when they had those long shifts, make him play a little bit earlier or make him play short. Then that fan shape doesn't happen that quick because Latrell and that just moves so beautiful and Cody walks with such beautiful hands. And, it's fucking hard to get, man. And Ren's good at getting up and shutting it down yeah. too sometimes before. It so gets Ren going. might see it like when when Cam Murray's going out the back. And if he digs in too far, that's when Reynolds needs to shoot. Yep. Not put pressure on his guys outside him, but – 
All right, the first game on Friday night at 6 p.m. at Points Bet Stadium is the Sharks against the Bulldogs. Our partners at the tab have the Sharks $1.26, the Bulldogs $3.90, and the line is massive at 10.5, but there is support for the line of 10.5 mates on the Bulldogs with the $1.85. Um, Cronulla Sharks, uh, as per last week, Will Kennedy, Sandy Katoa, Jesse Ramian, Sifatelakai, Ronaldo Mortalo, Braden Trindle, Nico Hines. Apologies, there's been a change. Toby Rudolph yeah, is starting. Yeah, the Dolphs in. Yeah, the Dolphs in over Royce Hunt. Blake Braley, Oregon Kafusi, Britton Nikita, T. Wilton, Cam McGuinness, Dal Finucan, Jack Williams, Royce Hunt back on the bench, Tom Hazelton. So it's a very heavy pack, mates, like I was Big talking game. about before. Uh, the Bulldogs team, you've gone with just the one change, which was forced due to Fox. Uh, I have a feeling that there's going to be more changes. Blake Taff at fullback, Blake Wilson on the wing, Jacob Carraz at centre, Stephen Crichton the other centre. Connor Tracy's the new guy filling in for Fox. Matt Burton, Drew Hutchinson in the halves. Max King and Reid Marnie with Poasa Farmasuli in the front row. Viliami Kikau, Jacob Preston and Jamin Salmon at lock. On the bench, Kurt Mann was really good Kurt for Mann, you Kurt Mann, great debut. Great Samuel debut. Samuel Hughes, Josh Curran and Curtis Morin. Still very light bench uh, against a very heavy-handed mm. Cronulla Sharks team, mate. Yeah, there's no secret where most teams are going to go. And you can take that both ways, different ways if you're the Bulldogs. Take it personal and fucking throw it straight back in their face. <clears throat> we'll just roll over. How do you? And I just don't though, think mate? they will. They just you just you've got to just attack in numbers. Play footy. You've got to attack in numbers yeah. in defence and attack. Mm. You can't go one out if you're light on the you know on the on the pack. Like these guys are fucking Hazelton. He's six foot six, six foot seven. He's a big boy. I think across the Royce board, one hundred and twenty plus. Have a, have it's about got a bit of massive t- yeah, but you've got to attack in. You can't be one on ones. They can't be isolating. Um, Reed Marnie and all our little fellas in the middle. Mm. Like that's where they're going to go. They're trying, yeah, you've got to get in there. Two or three tackles. And it's hard now with that leg rule, mm, right? It is. So you can't pick up and drive back. So it needs to be real like you hit up top, grab ball, get under hooks, you get hit here, then you get hit here. So it's very methodical yep. and they train for it. So they know what they, they, they know what they've got to do. It's about applying it, right? That's with every team. Most teams that are underweight, when you're playing against the big boys, you go on attacking numbers. Nothing worse being a big guy playing against a small attacking pack, which we have, and you just got attacking numbers. Get hit legs, hit legs, hit hips, all that kind of stuff. Don't try. You're not going to fucking bash Royce Hunt. The unless last... you're Royce, unless you're Fanua Blake or someone like that. Mm. Tino, you know, he might get him, you know, mm. but you're not, he's just a little nugget who's going to, it's fucking hard to put a hit on him. Yeah. I was, I was Even those say, blokes probably yeah, can't hit him because yeah. he's got that bump and he's low center of gravity, but you can get it, Dolph, can't you? You can get it, yep. Hazleton. You've got yep. some big real estate here. Yep. If you're fucking attacking numbers, you want to go one out against a big bloke, you get an elbow straight in the mouth. What about an attack, mate? How do they move that pack Move around? with numbers as well. Like yeah. Max King needs a push all the time. Needs someone out the back. He needs pu- oh, edges pushing up so everybody comes up and don't gang tackle you because mm. that's what they're going to do to a lighter pack. If you're a bigger pack, I'm going to fucking monster you. Mm. You know what I mean? Like we had that mentality. You're a lighter pack, man. Good luck. And this is back when you could do all this fucking dirty shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. But like now you, it's very, you know, they're going to they pick up on things, but they just need everybody pushing the same energy as they had last week, right? I know we got beat and like, but like there's got to be some positives to take out of that game, right? For sure. Like they, the, fuck, they as I said, we got pumped by 50 last year. We mean white flag at like fucking 50 minutes with all the ball that Parramatta had and everything like that. All, all the shit ball we got coming out of yardage and just doing four fucking hit, four tackles because we're so gassed. Yeah. And then kicking it, and then getting on that kick chase, and then got those guys coming up and putting an attack and kick. That happened for fucking 40 minutes. Yeah. More and yeah. we still were resilient enough to keep pushing them back. We made over 400 tackles. Yeah, it's crazy. I didn't make that in my whole career. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Uh, the second game is at Blue Bet Stadium Penrith Panthers versus the Parramatta Eels. The Panthers team is as followed Dylan Edwards, Sunua, Sunia Taruva, Isaac Tonga, who just got a big upgrade. Shout out to Isaac well Tonga. Oh, well done. Taylor May, who will be getting an upgrade soon, I'm pretty sure. Brian Toto, Jerome Law, Nathan Cleary, Moses Liotta. Mitch Kenny is back, mate. James Fisher Harris. Scotty Sorensen is also back. Oh, Liam Martin, Isaiah Yo, Sonny Luke, Lindsay Smith, Liam Henry, Luke Garner, and Dane Laurie and Matt Eisenhuth are 18 and 19. As for Parramatta, Clint Gutherson, Bailey Simonson, Viliami Penasini, Morgan Harper, Sean Russell, Dylan Brown. Mitch Moses is good to go despite the groin injury that he picked up last week. Regan Campbell-Gillard, Joey Lusick, Junior Bolo. Name to start, I dare say he'll be coming off the bench again or maybe they rotate a little bit. Situational footy, right? Okay. 
this is where I want Junior to start against. So okay. I, I'm not sure what he would do, but I want him to go at Fisher Harris and Leota, I like it. Paulo, Reg. Let's go, go at it, boys. 30 minutes. All right, Sean Lane, back row with Bryce Cartwright, Jermaine Hopgood, Brendan Hands. Therefore, you're going to bring Ryan Madison and Jai Offerangawa off the bench, Campbell Tualangi as well. They've also got Offerhick, the Ogden, and Woodamu. Woodamu. Woodamu Greg in the 19. So um, they've got good. They've, they've got a bit of depth now, eh, with this new rotation if they can if they can manage it right. How do you see this game going, Mace? Oh, actually, <sighs> I didn't. Our, the the tab have Penrith dollar thirty eight favourites, Parramatta three dollar ten underdogs, and the line is seven and a half. Like when I was looking through the teams yesterday, I was like, "Yeah, I like Parramatta." Yeah, you, Mitch Kenny got you. Yeah, Mitch Kenny and Sorensen. I didn't know they were in there. I didn't. Re- I didn't even read Penrith's team. Yeah. Far out. I, uh, I, I could hear you. I heard you ch- change your mind when I was reading uh, out Mitch Kenny and Scott Sorensen. Mitch Kenny holds so much energy in that in that middle, and Sorensen's a gun as well. Fuck, I'm gonna have to go back. You going I'm back to Penrith again. Okay, I'm on para. Yeah, good. All right. Oh, and by oh, the way, I don't, oh, I don't, oh. just be, just before for the for the last uh, game, judging by my best friend, you know what I'm on minus ten and a half. Cronulla, Nico Hines, anytime. That's my try score. I just don't see Penrith losing two in a row. Not not Three in a row. Club challenge as well. Oh, don't count that. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> oh, super, Love you, Wigan. Super League popping <laughs> straight now. We've got a nah, big fan base over in the I Super know, League, I'm mate. I'm joking, God. Of course it counts, but yeah, I don't, well, three no, in not. a row. <laughs> <laughs> three, three in a row then. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I, I can't see it happening. And it's at Penrith, it's their first, it's their first game. I know, I know Para's got the wood on them like during the year and all that sort of shit. But when it matters, they don't. That's true. But when this, it matters, this I, think, I think this matters a bit too. I don't to think Penrith. It, yeah. I don't think they're going to go 0 oh, 2. Yeah, I like Para. I'm going. I'm, I did too before Mitch Kenny turned up on the screen and yep. Sorensen. Yeah, because they they all the weaknesses last week. They got they got done through the middle, man. And Kenny is that dude. Like when you run, yeah, he when is. you see I Leota, like oh, I don't want to run at him. I don't want to run at Fish. Yo, yeah, he's a bigger body. Then little Kenny. If you don't understand how he hits, he fucking hits like a truck. So he's got the perfect body type to for what. Reg, yeah, he, Reg won't run it. Reg will, but yeah. I'm just saying, I'd rather if, if, if it's him. Look what he and the other body types, Fish and Leota, they're not six five. Six five people love running at six five people. Mitch Kenny has licked Mitch Reg Ken- before. A yeah, but, times. yeah, Leota hits. He'll dip and hit you, and so will Leota. Oh. I'm going to run it. You, you'd be going at Yoey. but I know Reg is big tough bass anyway. He don't give a shit. He's going to run. But Mitch Kenny, he comes flying out, and he could. How hard is it? How hard is it to run at that Penrith pack? Like you look up, you got James Fisher, Harris, and fucking Leota, and you're like, ah, veer away from them, and then you run into Mitch Kenny in this case. It was like us when we were playing. So it was me, Marco Mealy, Roy Asatasi, Hughes, and then fucking Adam Perry. He's the hardest hitter out of everyone. (laughs) You run into Nuggy, you just snap your ribs. I'm like, all right, good luck. Um, My anytime try scorer is I forgot who added. Oh, we mentioned him right at the start. I'm going to go Sean Lane. I'm going to go Sean Lane. I think they're going to score on the edge. I think they're going to be very uh, left side dominant with Mitch Moses still nursing this groin injury. So I think they get a lot of traffic to the left edge. Um, Maybe it comes off a little kick. Maybe it comes off a little dribbling kick. He's got to get through the dog of dogs, Liam Martin. You reckon he's going to score an outside in line or just a little shitty kick? Oh, I like that. You know what I mean? Maybe a little shitty kick. Maybe a little shitty kick. Yeah, go the kick because he ain't getting through that. Because you've got Cleary and you've got him. It'd be like a deflection or like a a line break, line break, and then flick it back in and and Lane's got it. Liam Martin's a dog, but he's also probably got a foot on him over the top. Catching the air. Mitch Moses. Dink near the fucking post. Yeah. Oh, I feel like I just talked that into existence. You got it. You got it. You got uh, it, mate. You got to believe it. You, be, oh, you make me believe. <laughs> Lane's going to score, guys. Get on it. All right. Saturday, March 16th, we've got the Canberra Raiders versus the West Tigers at GIA Stadium. Raiders are back at home, Mace, after a really good round one victory. And this is the first one mm. we're going to see the West Tigers. Uh, the Raiders team, Jordan Rapiner, Albert Hopperwhitey moves to the wing to make way for Sebastian Chris, who partners up in the centres with Matty Timakor. Xavier Savage retains his spot, which I'm happy about. Ethan Strange was really good uh, game one because his partner was even better, Jamal Fogarty. Josh Papali'i, Danny Levi, Josh Tarpanet in the front row, Hudson Young. Zach Hoskins, really good performance. I, mm. I had a, a YouTube comment that we that we uh, didn't uh, mention him too much. He was really good. Morgan Smithies, Tom Starling, Emre Gula, Ate Mariota, who I absolutely love, and Pasami Solo. Uh, as for the Tigers, the first time we see him, Dream Buller, Charlie Stain, Stafford Toa. Got a debut here, Solomana Fatape. 
And Junior Tupo is on the wing. Got another debut in Lachlan Gelvin, the young kid from Westfield Sports Mace, only 19 years old. He's going to partner Jaden Sullivan with Aiden Caesar on the bench. So Stefano Utum- Stefano. Uto Ikemanu in the front row with Apisai Coruscant, Dave Klemmer, Isaiah Papali'i, John Bateman, and Alex Seafarth. On the bench, we mentioned it. Aiden Caesar, Fanua Pole, Alex Twile, and Sam Wallop, Fainu. <sighs> Jeez. Be a tough game, mate. <laughs> yeah, they the first game. It's hard Tigers, to pick early in the year. Playing against Canberra down there. Yeah. Canberra, so I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you the win. odds. I'll, I'll give you the odds. You've got a bit yeah. of white stuff on your chin there too, mate. Get that. Uh, I'll give you the odds so you can uh, you can judge it off this. Looking at value. Canberra Raiders favourites, $1.42. West Tigers, $2.90. The start is 7 and a half. Yeah. I like the Tigers then. Yeah, same. Yeah. yeah. Just with that first game, I know it's like, what is it, Saturday – is it a Sunday game? Yes, yeah, Saturday afternoon, Saturday 3 o'clock. Saturday 3 o'clock. Weather's usually not too bad down there. This is the time you want to play you the want to play them right now. Afternoon. Be fast game. Be yep. fast game. Yeah, I think it might suit um, the style of the Tigers if they're playing that flat and fast, a lot of skill around the ruck, aggressive sort of football. So I think it might suit them. Does, it's going to be a hard game. It's going to be hard. Does Ricky have fuck him up in the uh... – He's got it everywhere. <laughs> I don't think I don't think this is a game where Sticky can use that motivation though because they're playing in their their favourites. Like, He'll be bagging the coaching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how that's how deep he'll go. Yeah. Look at that coach. Yeah. <laughs> Not putting in the work. Yeah. See what he only works said? fucking two hours a week. See what Bulldog Richie said. <laughs> yeah. You see what Bulldog Richie said. He must be shit. Yeah. I'm, I think the Tigers might get him. Um, on, the, on, the, on the Tigers, I'm excited to see this Lachlan Galvin. Like I said, he's a, a bigger body. He's 19 years old. He beats he beat out Aiden Caesar. There's been wow. chirp about him all off season that this was going to be potentially um, that he was going to find his way into the lineup. So excited to see what he looks like. And uh, Solomon Fatape, I don't know much about him. I, I believe he's just arrived um, to the West Tigers, but uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing. Um, I'm not confident about this pick. <laughs> I'm willing to go down, but um, I'm really excited to see Jerome Buller year two, mate. Yeah, he looked at man. He's bigger than I thought, man. He's like six foot three or four. Is that when you seen him next center next yeah. to GI in some of the clips? Yeah, I man. didn't realize so he was that, that big as well. Bro, hey. He's massive. He looks like he's filled out again. Yeah, I, 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 it's I was, dangerous, man. I was speaking to um, uh, Cher- Cherry Evans through the week because I'm going to the game on Sunday as well, by the way, and I just talked about a couple of players in particular. They're all very similar bodies, age, mm. um, and parts of their career. We were talking about he said Sabi had come back really like obviously disappointed with Sabi missing some work now. He come back a little bit confident, he's a little bit stronger. I thought Joseph Swali, he looked the same. I thought Xavier Coates, all these guys on their third, fourth season Damn. outside backs that started at 18, 19 year old. Sometimes you look at him and you go, You're fast, you're strong, you should be sweet. But it takes mm. three years of first yeah, grade to get into it, young, doesn't it? Yeah. Be young men now. They're little boys when they first start. Yeah, I don't know about that one. I like it. Good luck, punters. Yeah, that's a tough one, but I'm going to I'm going to go to the Tigers and I'm going to go Jareem Buller as my anytime try scorer. Now, this one gets tricky as yeah, well. I like this one. North North Queensland Cowboys at home to the Newcastle Knights. Uh, the Cowboys unchanged. Scott Drinkwater, Cole Felt, Valentine Holmes, Zach Labert, really impressive last week. Murray Talangi, Tommy Dearden, Chad Townsend, Jordan McLean, Reese Robson, Jason Tomalolo, Hylam Luke, Jeremiah Nye, Ruben Cotter, Jake Granville, Griffin Neems, Sam McIntyre, Cooley Kefu. Vinay Fuiaki. That's one of my favourite names to say that, actually. Knights team, Caelan Ponga. Thomas Jenkins, Jenkins comes on the board, uh, comes into the team from an – Thomas Jenkins comes into the team for Anari Tuala, who's missing out. Dane Gagai, Bradman Best, Greg Marzio, all the same. Tyson Gamble and Jackson Hastings remain as a six and seven. For now, Jacob Saifidi, Phoenix Crossland, Leo Thompson, Tyson Frizzell and Kai Pierce mm. poor into the starting lineup uh, for the injured uh, Lucas – Dylan Lucas, Adam Elliott at lock, Jack Cogger, Daniel Saifidi, Jack Hetherington at Jed Cartwright comes onto the bench as the new back row hybrid to fill in. Yeah, if anything, Newcastle looks stronger with Kai Pierce Paul starting on that left edge. Well, they're two dollars eighty-five with our friends at the tab. North Queensland at a dollar forty-three, and the line is a dollar. Uh, the line is seven and a half. So, do you think they can keep it close? No, not really. Not up there. Not late. I think. I think the Cowboys will have too much for them. That right edge looks dangerous, man. And they've just got a really well-balanced side. First game up there, it's going to be hot as hell. It'll be awful, awful, awful to play with. Um, yeah, I just think there'll be too much. Look at that four-pack, man. Jason Talmalolo, Robson. Should not be nice and fresh, Jason. Yeah, he played fresh, 22 minutes yeah. last week. 
you know, their back line is a bunch of superstars. It's pretty even back line, apart from obviously the halves where Townsend did and Gamble and Hastings. You know, this is tricky. Team. This is a tricky game, Mace. This is one of those games where you'll be watching it. We'll talk about it in review. Cowboys looked outstanding. Knights looked awful. Yeah, but you know how proud NRL players are. Yeah, I feel yeah. like there'll be a bounce back. I'm... I struggled on the, the two games that I struggled on the most with this game because when I first looked at it on paper, I went Cowboys. Yeah. And then I had a look at it and I was like, oh. It's a really was... yuck game for both teams because it's hot. Just because Queensland, North Queensland, because they live in Townsville, yeah. doesn't mean the ball's not slippery for everyone. Yeah. You don't train in those conditions. You train early in the morning. And they still made a lot of errors yeah, against the Dolphins. Yeah, they still got a lot of errors, you know. But, they you know, they dropped the ball three times after scoring points against the Dolphins as Newcastle, well. So it's not like they'll super clean. No, no, no. Newcastle will be – they'll be pumped to get up there, mm. try and get that first win. But I just think the Cowboys still driving them from last year, just pissed off about not making the eight and okay. getting these early games winning. That's why that, I went them yeah, as well. Yeah, that's why I think that they'll be so much stronger mentally and not let these like games where they should win slip up. Yep. I think that's their mentality because they probably did about they did that like six or seven times last year. Yeah, probably had a, yeah the three cost or four them. for sure. Yeah, they, and it they... cost them when they're like, you know what, Newcastle. Yeah, they're okay. They could beat they could beat anyone on their day, but they're going match for match. We should win. Yeah, I agree. I agree, and um, I think they'll you know at the back end of that game they looked super focused. Uh, I, I feel like they'll keep it going because. There's a, there's a bit of a changing in the guard happening here too, right? Mm. Like Chad Townsend and Jason Tomalolo, the captain, the skip, yeah. like the skippers. So there's a lot of in-house situations that are keeping these players on their toes. And yeah. um, if Newcastle don't get this going early, they started slow last year, Man. I think there'll be a little bit of noise and a bit of pressure, internal pressure from them Kai as well. Force, Kai Pierce paul will be interesting to watch. Yeah, on that I'm, left edge, if they give him early ball, if what sort of like diversions they have, they hit him early, hit Frizzell early, don't go out the back to Ponga so much. You know, like, they need to hide Ponga a little bit, right? In what way? Oh, just don't be like – he needs to like really – Sweet disguise, late. disguise where he's going, especially especially when they get to like a left post. You know they're going to go right. Mm. You know what I mean. So it's like, especially if they get to a right post, you know they're going to go left. But he just needs to be maybe just hang hang a fair bit. You know. You know what they had last year, and I look, they didn't really get the opportunity to because they dropped the ball so much against the Raiders. But they had really nice variation on exactly the same play. Yeah. So instead of it just being a block for block for block, they'd go a block. Drop block, so it might be yeah. Jackson Hastings dropping a middle under. Then he squares up. Then the next time they run the exact same play, but then they throw a tunnel and it goes directly to Bradman Bess on the out, mm. and they just use Kalen as a decoy. So they do have all these variations. They just never got. So to the it. difference between a halfback who like digs into the line like a JT or a Joey, like they'll dig in and take the take the hit right mm. where Hastings just shows the dummy like he's passing like. Three meters before the line. Sometimes it's a bit premeditated. It's so me. easy to defend. Mm. You need to dig into A or B to make Ponga get those clear runs and outside the three man or like cut back in or whatever. Yep. You can't just go dummy and then pass straight to KP because P- the defenses are too good. They do too much video, and if you don't dig in, even with Gamble and stuff, Gamble goes to the line. Mm. He doesn't mind copping a lick. Mm. He's got to do it. But the other but his, fella, but his pass isn't. But as it's clean not. Though. Yeah, but exactly. <laughs> but he's willing to go to the line yeah. where the other guy, he's like, he knows. Mm. And the fucking halfback's so protected right now, but he's still, he's still not digging in. Like mm. guys, to have a look at guys like JT and have a look at Andrew Johns and have a look at all the great halfbacks. They cop the fucking hits yeah. just so those guys can get those clear breaks on the edge. He did it well at the back end of the last year. He did get a lot better at it. But um, yeah. All right, we got yeah, plenty, plenty of time. Yeah. Um, all right, mate, let's get to the Melbourne Storm versus the Warriors. Uh, did I say who my anytime try score was? No, I didn't. No. I'm on the Cowboys minus seven and a half, and I'm on Valentine Holmes anytime. Uh, Melbourne Storm versus Warriors. This is another tricky game. 7.35 p.m. at Amy Park. The Storm, unchanged. Ryan Puppenhausen, Warbrick, Remus Smith, Nick Meany, Xavier Coach, Jonah Pezzett remains as Munster's still out. Jerome Hughes, Tui Kamakamitha, Harry Grant, Josh King, Joe Chan, Alyssa Katoa, Trent Liero, Tyrone Wishart, Christian Welsh, Christian, uh, Chris Lewis, Alec McDonald. For the Warriors, Kane Tulpicki, Dallin Martinez, Lesniak, Rocco Berry, Roger Tuavasa Shek, Marcelo Montoya. Luki, can you stop moving that fucking the mouse so I can keep saying it? Uh, Ma, Luke Metcalf, Sean Johnson, Adam Fanua Blake, Wade Egan, Mitch Barnett, Jackson Ford, Kurt Catewell, Tohu Harris, Freddie Lusick, Tom Arley, Bunty Afoa. 
and Dylan Walker. He's moving the fucking <laughs> mouse on me as I'm reading it right next to the fucking team list. Um, <clears throat> oh, far out. I'll give you the odds, mate, and this yeah. can, might help you with the uh, decision as well. The Storm are favourites, $1.47. The Warriors, two seventy. The line is plus and a half, five and a half. And there is a seems to be a lot of money for the Melbourne Storm, minus five and a half at a dollar eighty. Wow. I'm gonna go the Warriors. <clears throat> I just think if, if they're worth anything what they what they everyone thinks they're gonna be, they'll come they'll come to Melbourne and take the two points off them. Mm. Fucking I'm not confident. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough I'm, week. I'm not confident. I don't know how fit Wade Egan is. Yes. I'm not sure if he's going to play. If he goes off last week and doesn't even come back on with it, just a hyperextension, yep. it's fucking got to be more than that. I think he's just he's playing cat and mouse there. Yeah, okay. But I can't. <laughs> can I just not back out on game day when they don't put him in at 2 o'clock? Um, yeah, you can say that. So you are you would be back It's depending Warriors. on Wade. If Wade Egan's not playing, yep. 100% Melbourne. Yes, okay. that's I'm, it. I'm on my, I'm on Melbourne regardless, so it's not going to change my yeah. pick. I like Melbourne minus the start. I think uh, with Pappy back in that team, they looked a lot more settled, not only offensively but particularly defensively. Yeah, uh, I think they made really strong decisions. Jerome Hughes generally loves playing the Warriors well. I think he normally plays well, so I'm going to go just outside him, a guy who'd. Love a little bit of revenge against the Warriors as well. He's only a year removed, but Alissi Katoa, I'm going to go yeah, him yeah. any time at $3.50. I think yeah, those nice. two can have a bit of joy on the edges. And I feel like after such a good year, these sorts of teams like the Knights and the Warriors, very similar to the Cowboys and the Eels and the Rabbitohs from the year before. It smells like that after you get – It's can, got a bit of a feeling. We can't hit, we can't hit them straight away mm. after round one. We'll three see. games. Okay. We'll give, give them three. three games. Will you be – what will be your if the, if the Warriors drop this is a panic stations? Actually, let's wait until we see. Let's see. No, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Yeah. It's a, it's played against two really good teams. I yeah. mean, they'll be filthy on last week because they just they dropped the ball there. They should have got Cronulla. Yes, they should. I'm not sold on Cronulla just because they got their last sixty. Yeah, they're still yeah, a good, right. big, They're still a good, really big side, but the Warriors lost that game. Yeah, I'm not completely sold on yeah. Cronulla, and I don't think it's dire straits for the Warriors. I no. just think they cop a really bad ma matchup round two. We just can't have Wade. Wade Egan is their key, mate. Yeah, if Wade Egan was – yeah, I think he's going to be 50-50. If he plays, I'm a little bit more worried. But if this game was at the Warriors, I'd probably be leaning towards the Warriors. Do you push him? Just say if he doesn't come back on no. with his – Do you push him like against a team like – He's too important. Against the Melbourne – they love squeezing elbows as well. Right? <laughs> I think it's – um. I think it's too early in the season. I'd play. Uh, I'd bring Jazz to Vanga, who, who can play. So if he don't play, I'm going Melbourne. Okay. All right. And I don't think he's playing. The first game is on Sunday is Manly Seagulls versus Sydney Roosters. Ooh. I'll be at this game as well, going out to watch the boys. Excited for that. Game of the round. Uh, 4.05 at Four Pines Park. Seagulls team as – no, it's not. Jason Saab's out. Tommy Travojevic is fullback. Jason Saab is out. So Tommy Talao comes onto the wing with Toltel Kola, Ruben Garrick, and Jackson Polo in the outs in the, in the in the outside backs. Luke Brooks was good on debut for Manly. Daly Cherry Evans, Taniela Paseka, Lockman Croker, Josh Alawai, Hamoli Olakwatu. Ben Travojevic remains in the back row. Still no Josh Schuster. Jake Travojevic at lock. Carlos Lawton at fourteen. Corey Waddell, Ethan Bullimore, and Nathan Brown out of the bench. As for the Roosters, James Tedesco, Daniel Tupo, Joseph Okuso, Swali'i, Joseph Manu, and Dom Young plays his first game for the Roosters. Luke Keary and Sam Walker in the halves. Jared Rurria Hargraves comes back in place straight into the starting lineup. Not Spencer bad. Lenu. Brendan Smith and Lindsay Collins in the front row with him. Siwa Wong and Satili Tupanoa both cleared. Uh, they uh, At one point, I thought they were in uh, trouble for this game. Victor Radley at lock. Sandon Smith in the full of white, Nat Butcher, and Terrell May remains on the bench. I'd love to see Terrell May start and, and Jared, Jared come off the bench, but I can understand yeah, well, in this sort of game. Yeah, pack, man. Yeah. I, 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 whatever you end up doing, I think it's going to be a strong team regardless. He always goes hard against Manly too. This is going to be a mad his, game, his, mate. It's his ex-club, which was only 15 years ago, but he's a Manly junior. Yeah, Manly junior. Um, um, the Tab are struggling to split him. They've got Manly underdogs at home, $2.15. Sydney Roosters are $1.70, and the line is one and a half. So that's as close as it gets for this round, mate. A lot of the games are more of a try where this is a bit of a yeah. coin flip. Jeez, I don't know of this game. You know what I was very concerned about? Look who's number 22 for the Roosters. Angus Crichton. Yeah. He's down. He's way down the page there. Yeah. wonder what he's done. Um, anyway, I like, I, like the, I like the Roosters. I don't know why. 
I just think, like, just say with their halves, I think they sort of figured it out. It's a good team. Right. They've got a pretty good team. It's a really good team. I like Tupanu. I like Siwa Wong, Collins, Hargraves, Brandon Smith. Like, they, they get it going, man. Victor Radley just – Victor Radley was probably the one that gets me over the line. Mm. Because the good way bat- that he was playing. Good battle with Jakey. Jakey was really good too. Yeah, first the, back, the back five was pretty even. You know what I mean? They would get, they would get out of yardage pretty easy. And it would just be up to like the back rollers and the halves make, doing their good kicks and just up to some special play from a Teddy or like a Trebojevic or something like that. Well, that's where I'm, that's where I'm going manly because I think the difference will be Tommy and Chez. I think they really guide the team mm. around on this, on this performance. You know, looking forward to like – I want to see like the combinations between a Brandon Smith, Sam Walker and Kiri just really like take it on. Yeah. And I think, that's, I think it's slowly sort of happening, right? Kiri – I like Sam Walker, man. Like Luke Brooks, look, it's fucking so even. This it is, is a very even game. I look through this thing, I was just going, man for man. I'm like, if everybody plays their best, I'm like, who wins this game? It's fucking very even. It's going to, like, you look at it, if Tommy Trebojevic plays his best game and Teddy plays his best game. If there is an omen for this game, I have attended three games in, since I've returned back from the Super League. When I've attended a game, Manly have not lost. Right. So there you go. There you beats, go, punters. Beats a good team. So, punters at home, I am attending this game and I'll be in. Uh, Is that Brookie 2 on a Sunday? It's very hard. I'm yeah. going Tolu Kola as my anytime try score. Well, you're as going well. Manly, I'll just go to the Roosters. Okay. Just because I'm, 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 I am I, I like the, I like Ola Kawatu, man. I think he's going to, he's going to destroy whoever's at that right three. So, he's on the, he's on, um, he's on Kiri or He's Kiri's side. Yes, Kiri goes, Kiri's a good defender, but still. It's Ola Kawatu. And he's, he looks like he's on a tear. <clears throat> uh, my anytime try score is Tolu Tau Kola. Uh, at $3.75, I think it's juicy because uh, he yeah. can score. He loves scoring at four points as well. All right, last game. They're struggling to, to split this one as well, mate. $1.95 about the Dolphins. $1.85 about the, the much improved Dragons. The line is one and a half, similar to the game above. The lineups are. As followed, and this game is at KO Stadium up at Redcliffe. Hamaso Tabuai Fido, Jermaine Asako, Jack Everillo is in the centres. He's new over Tessie oh, New. Uh, Herbie Farnworth, Jack Bostock on the wings. Cody Nikarima, Isaiah Katoa in for Sean O'Sullivan. Jesse Bromwich, Jer- Jeremy Marshall King, Jersey Flogler, K- Felice Kafusi, Ewan Aiken into the back row uh, for the injured. Um, forgetting his name, right? Connolly Lemuelu. Oh, Lemuelu's out as well. He's out. Jeez. Max Plath goes into the lock. Uh, Josh Kerr, Kenny Bromwich, Mark Nichols, Jared Wallace on the bench. Matters. Uh, as for the Dragons, I think they're as per last yeah. week. Oh, uh, no, Mudders Laurie is back in. Tyrell Sloan, <laughs> Zach Lomax, Moses Sully, Jack Bird, Michaela Ravalawa, Kyle Flanagan, Ben Hunt, Frankie Molo. There's been a lot of interest around Frankie Molo through the week too. Uh, Jacob Little, Blake Laurie, Tom Eisenhuth, Jaden Sewer, Jack DeBellin, Connor Mulesen. <laughs> That's one of the worst Mulesen? names ever to. Mulesen? It's got to be Mulesen. Michael yeah, Molo, the, the brother of Frankie. And Raymond Fatella-Marina with Luciano Leilua back playing his first game. Um, I think I was having a crack at Wayne about making changes and all that kind of stuff with the, the seven, Sullivan, like, oh, he's only had one game. Yeah, but he's had fucking five or six years. And he had a full season with yeah, him last year. you know what I mean? Like, so I th- I'm pretty sure he knows what he's doing up there. Katoa's still a young kid. He's the future of the game. He's the future of the club up there. you got to play him. Nick Rima needs to really own that team, man. Um they go as far as, as he goes, I reckon. And I, Marshall King, I think Marshall King's a de- like better than average player, right? It's a fucking gun. I just think St. George would be way too physical for him. And just if they play exactly like they did last week, they'll win most games. This is, again, this is not another one of the tricky games where you've got a team that was really good, playing a team that was really bad, they're now at home. Round two, you're gonna get you're gonna get a response. How big a response, how different are the teams? Uh coaching's gonna be really important. But I am leaning towards the Dragons. I actually think Dragons are really going to be pushing for the eight. I'm, I've seen enough in the trials. I think they're really impressive. Yeah. So I'm on the Dragons, and my anytime try scorer is Ben Hunt. Yep. I, I can't agree. I can't disagree with that. I just think um, St. George looked like they got a bunch of men, right? Mm. You know, they get out there, they're real physical, they look imposing. They didn't even have um, Blake Laurie last week. They've always had that look about them, but they've got. They've been coached properly. Yeah, in, and it's got very like crisp now. Mm. You know, like even their shifts. You know, like with uh, Ben Hunt to to Flanagan, it looks like they've played together for a couple of years. Yeah, it did. It, it looks like seamless. Didn't Liddell it? looks good. Mm. Right, the nine looks good. Little, yeah. you said Liddell like yeah, Sidell. I thought it was. I thought it was. Li- <laughs> Is it little? Little. little. Jacob but with little. the D. Yeah. 
Liddell. Liddell. Chuck Liddell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chuck Liddell at nine. He looks good. Yeah. So those combinations look all right, man. Like Ben Hunt, he's he's that dude still. Mm. Still a gun seven. So, you know, I don't think there would be – everyone will start coming at St. George if they lose this one. I'm really looking forward to this they round. They lose this one. Everyone's like, ah, oh, same St. George. I'm really looking forward to this round. Yeah. I can't wait to round two review. I think there's going to be uh, some really interesting yeah. games. As always, we want everyone to be playing safe during this footy season, so please keep front of mind what are you really gambling with. And if you need free and confidential support, call 1-800-858-858 or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. Enjoy round two. Enjoy the footy over the weekend, and we'll see you on Monday to review round two. See you Monday.